Hi, good afternoon everyone uh, and welcome to our seminar. Hope you're enjoying your day two of the Learning Technologies and Learning and Skills exhibition. Uh, we're going to be with you for the next 20 or 30 minutes talking to you about how we've created a world-class global training function at Oticon. My name is Simon Chilly. I'm Programme Director at Read Learning. Delighted to be joined here by Mikkel, Training Manager at Oticon. First, before we get into the detail, a little bit about Read Learning. Uh, hopefully you're familiar with us already, or at least with our, our recruitment cousins. Uh, we are a leading UK learning solutions provider. We part of the Read Group and formed in 1995, so looking forward to our 20th anniversary next year. We have over on our stand, number 57, uh, a number of different things which we'd like to talk to you about today, including 350 uh, courses and a suite of e-learning modules and performance support tools, which we'll be very excited to tell you all about. We look at over 100,000 learners uh, every year. Delighted to be joined by Mikkel today, who will tell you a little bit about the organisation he works for, Oticon. Thank you, Simon. Yeah, it's on. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Uh, yeah, my name is Mikkel, and uh, as you can hear, I'm not from the from the UK, so uh, apologies if uh, if anything is uh, said in the in a wrong way. Um, I work in a company called Oticon, which is a part of uh, William D. Mann Holding, which is a blue chip company in uh, in Denmark. Uh, so after this session, if anyone want to buy some shares, this is uh, the company to look for on the stock exchange. Um, Oticon is uh, one of the leading manufacturers of, uh, of hearing aids. So Simon, if you will uh, flip the uh, flip the slide, uh, we are located just outside Copenhagen in uh, in Denmark. Um, the hearing aid business is a funny business to be in because it's very different from any other business. Bottom line, we are selling a, a product that people they don't really want. They uh, get it because they need to get it, but personally I haven't met anyone who came in and said, yes, I'd just love to have a hearing aid, uh, like a new mobile phone or stuff like that. So um, the large challenge in this, and especially when you, when you talk training, is that we work with a lot of professionals. So we develop materials uh, for training in the technologies, and then we have to deliver this to professionals. And then the professionals has to take all the stuff we are providing and give to the end users. Uh, so there's a large challenge ensuring that we uh, transform and make sure that the messages are, are understood. Mm. Um, so the reason why we uh, decided to, uh, to partner up with Reed was to uh, ensure uh, uh, that we had a common foundation for all the trainers. Uh, we are present in more than uh, 30 countries uh, around the world and uh, we have a lot of different people training so one of the, the main challenges the, uh, these are all professionals they know a lot of they have been in the business for many years they know a lot about training know a lot about the products and one of the large challenges from the, the headquarters is to ensure we have a, a common foundation for training mm. uh, for these guys and having them in twice a year delivering the new technologies the new products we wanted to have a strategic partner to help us create a room where we could help them develop and uh, and enhance their training skills and learn new skills within the, within training mm. so read learning uh, took the challenge of working with what is a very intelligent very well educated very professional group of trainers who engage with end users on highly technical, highly complex information, but deliver it in a presentation style. So we'll have a whole load of information that they need to impart, and would do that by imparting that information. We wanted to work with them to help them understand what world-class learning and development really means. The ways in which you can engage with a diverse group of people, the ways in which you can connect people internationally without needing to bring them together quite as often, the ways to make learning really stick. In order for us to do that, we needed to take the time it took to understand the Oticon training function and uh, the Oticon International Training Academy, who would form the group of people that we would work with. For us to do that, we needed to then understand what world-class learning and development really meant, uh, so that we could, as it says we do up here, listen and prepare those learners in order to engage with a, a set of materials and content and learning opportunities that would inspire, engage and develop them to be able to achieve world-class. For a business that's world-class in everything else, it stands to reason that they would be challenging and 
thought-provoking in the way in which they would approach L&D. Uh, and we found that to be the case. One of the first things that we did as part of the partnership was develop a piece of work which had started already but which needed some thought leadership and learning insight to create a set of guiding principles for learning and development, some overarching values which would allow the business to create consistency across a number of different continents and countries, styles, preferences and techniques which they can use to either reinforce the messages they've learned or correct or inspire and induct new members of their team. Um, we arrived at six terms, uh, which you can now see. Uh, those six things are the values or principles, things which we hold to be true uh, about the way in which learning and development can be delivered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so <clears throat> yeah, like I said, we have a lot of trainers with a lot of different backgrounds. They're all professionals, and they've all been doing this for, for many years and are good trainers. But sometimes you might go out in, a, in an area where you're not uh, really on, on safe ground, like me today. So we wanted to have these guiding principles uh, kind of a safe haven or something you could use so you always uh, could build up your training session and make sure that you derived at the, at the goal you wanted. So uh, Reed has been a, a fantastic uh, partner in this, providing a lot of the theoretical background, giving a lot of feedbacks and providing a lot of uh, tips and tricks for how to develop these uh, guiding principles. So there are six guiding principles which is plan the session, consider the end user, cultivate curiosity, involve the audience, tell stories and transfer learning. And based on the work we did together with Reed, all this um, work on the guiding principles, we derived at making a set of cards that all the trainers they can use where they can pick and choose different elements for before, during and after the training sessions. So this is one of the, you can say, concrete results of, uh, of uh, working together with the uh, read learning. Yeah, and I think it, the really important point which um, the really important point which I think is worth making is that we started off with something quite theoretical about values and beliefs about learning and development, but we needed to drill that down into something highly practical which people could use and take away. Something which doesn't need to be done in the training room, but which people can take away and carry on that developmental journey which they started in last May in, in Copenhagen um, and have something on their desk which they can share with their colleagues and create a guiding principle framework which allows them to do the right things all the time, every time. Yeah, and the, the main thing is it's guiding. So this is a help, it's not a set of rules that you have to, it's guiding and it's very, very flexible. <laughs> To the solution itself, we have, uh, we're in the middle of a two-year journey, which we're taking the Oticon International Training Academy on. And it started off in terms of subject matter around presentation and delivery. You know, let's start at the things which they're already doing very well and look at the incremental improvements, the little nudges that we could make to that, moving through training design and then moving on in future to learning technologies and evaluation and kind of completing the set of a fully rounded learning and development professional. The way in which we do that I mean, we've got the what we do on here, yet yeah, we've got pre-work, that's reflective activity, which gets people connecting with people they'll see on the course before they get there so that we can start building, building some bridges of communication and collaboration, some feedback, some thought-provoking activities and ways in which they can start to understand their own behavior in the context of being world-class. We do get people together on face-to-face -to -face sessions. We give them the opportunity to practice. I hope in a few minutes we can get some of you maybe involved in that or at least demonstrate to you some of the things which we did on the session to get people thinking a little bit differently about the way they deliver and the way they help other people deliver. Virtual training, so we can only get them in the same room twice a year, but we've got a lot more to tell them and a lot more to share with them, and they've got a lot more to share with us. So using the Adobe Connect platform and some virtual trainers from, from our, our pool of associates, we're able to get these people connecting together much more regularly, able to build on the things that they learn on the face-to-face -face sessions, and as we say here, reflect, and also deal with some action learning type things, so some challenges or some group coaching, but also developing the ideas and theories which they experience on the course. The reason why we do all that, what we're getting from that, is best use of time. We don't all have the amount of time that we used to have to spend on training. I imagine anyone who works provider side or in an L&D department will be challenging themselves constantly to cover more ground with less time in new and innovative ways. But also for this group of people, the need to be consistent required this international network that already existed to some extent, but which we needed to enhance and grow and get talking as much about product and about input 
as about learning and development and output focus. This is a journey that we're halfway through and we're looking to, to develop a lot more in. Uh, we're on. Um, yeah, and this getting this foundation, getting this face-to-face -face, uh, training from read learning is some of the things we can really see that has changed. Uh, people are having a common language, a common understanding of different tools, how to how to train. When we had the first session with read, I was really really nervous before, uh, being the the manager of the training and uh, will this go well? And I didn't know read that well. And and uh, but I must say uh, everything uh, was uh, put to shame. Uh, this lady came in, her name was Anne, and uh, I was in one of the, the groups, we were six people. And she had some very basic slides, and you know, in the beginning I was a little disappointed and said, oh, this is a learning company, wouldn't there be things flying around, you know, and uh, nice stuff and movies and things were timed. But she completely took the focus away from the slides, made it into watching each other, learning each, uh, by each other, practicing and enhancing your skills and this for me is one of the really really strong uh, parts of having this uh, this cooperation or this partnership uh, with read mm. yeah. so what I'd like to do very quickly is just give you a flavor of some of the things that we did on that first session that introductory session on on delivery in order to do that I will need uh, a few volunteers you don't need to stand up you don't need to do anything but you just need to promise to give Mikkel some feedback in a few minutes so anyone willing to give Mikkel some feedback in a couple of minutes Excellent. One or two. One or two. Brilliant. I will, I will come back to you at the end. Uh, so what we're going to ask Mikkel to do is practice delivering an introduction. So in order for Mikkel to do this really well, you'll need to be interested in what he's going to say. You'll need to understand the message. You'll need to want to hear more. Uh, so we're going to give Mikkel a sentence to read and see how he gets on. And I'll come back to the, those of you who are willing to join in to give us some feedback in a minute. OK. Yeah. Please be uh, gentle. Um, okay, so um, I love giving presentations. It is my favorite thing to do. I wish I could give presentations all day long. Brilliant. So let's give Mikkel a round of applause for a job well done. Uh, who, who's got some, uh, some developmental feedback for, uh, for, for Mikkel? I will try and capture this on my... This is Learn Tech, and I'm using a flip chart, but, so apologies for, for that, but I'm sure you'll forgive me. Shout something out at me. A bit more enthusiasm. He was looking at the screen, not the audience. Great. One more. I'd love a third. Two's enough. Let's go, let's go with two. I think you're right. There are only two things wrong with that. Um, so, Mikkel, we're going to give you another sentence, a bit more enthusiasm, and try and look at the audience. Okay. Um, this group is filled with great trainers. I have learned so much from each and every one of you. Brilliant. Well done, Mikkel. <laughs> Did we get more enthusiasm? I've got some yeses. I've got some mmms. I'm going to give you a little tick for that. Did he look at the audience? Excellent. One more go. Loads more enthusiasm on this one, Mikkel. It was a magnificent day, a wonderful day, a beautiful day. Excellent. <laughs> Marvellous. Enthusiastic enough. Good, 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 good. I've run out of sentences, so we're done. Um, <clears throat> the point that I'd like to get across here is that we spent, what, two or three minutes on that, and Mikkel's had the opportunity to practice his presentation a few times. Those of you who are happy to join in had an opportunity to practice giving constructive feedback. Uh, I've managed to practice my flip chart writing, which probably isn't a, a key objective, but something I'm really glad to have managed to, to do as well. That's a, a small flavor of the approach that we try and take when we're delivering in the, the classroom. We don't want to spend ages talking about theory. I didn't give you a model to use to say this is how you present with impact. It's practice and the support of your peers in helping you understand what impact you're having in real life and getting the support of people that you trust and will benefit from hearing more from. The value that has in a session like that means a few bits of practice, a nice round of applause, people feel good, that's great. But what it proves is that it's useful to solicit feedback and gain that feedback from other people. So when we reconnect in the virtual classrooms and we can start making these points and start people talk about their experience, we're used to giving feedback to each other at a really practical level. 
adjust this tiny part of what you're doing and you'll see some improvements. We could have got some feedback that would have involved suggestions and then maybe some demonstration and some example as well, which would have been, which would have been really nice and a step forward. So let's have a talk about what difference this is actually making at Oticon. Because we're at the start of a journey, but we are starting to see some results. Of course, we're asking the level one reactions at the end with the happy sheet. That's going really well. We're glad about that. We're happy to tell you some more detail, but I think probably there are some more impactful things we can talk to you about. What's really useful for us to know that we're on the right track is starting to hear some of the things that people are able to do now. So these are some of the summarized thoughts which we're getting from people. They're confident now that they're able to do these things. Now, some of these things are soft. Some of these things are a bit more tangible. People know how learning works. That's great. That means they're able to think about it in a slightly different way to they were before. Think of themselves as learning and development professionals as well as sales, marketing, or presenters. Uh, manage their nerves, a really important part of doing what we do. Uh, focus on the important bits, understanding the individual, and also putting more of themselves into the delivery. So feeling like they're able to own the message that they're giving, make sure they're able to tailor it to the group of people that are in front of them, and feel confident that what they're doing is good and world class. Yeah. And one thing from a company perspective that I see is really, really important, and I said it before, but is this foundation having this um, common uh, understanding of tools to use. One of the guys had to give a presentation right after, and you hear someone yelling from the, from the cloud, uh, Marcy, remember your A, B, C, D, and they, everyone is you know, speaking the same language, and this helps their professional sparring a lot, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, and also uh, us at the you can say head office training team to take all these things into consideration when we are taking them in and training mm -hmm. them. So this has really helped in uh, heighten uh, yeah. the training from the headquarters. Absolutely. And the way in which that's worked and the reason why that's going to continue to be successful is because we're doing things in the right order. So we're starting by engaging and priming people, then we move them into a development phase, and then we look at how they apply and support that learning. Coming up, we're halfway through the program uh, for uh, the Oticon International Training Academy. Uh, so these are some headlines of what we're going to be doing next. Michael, yeah, a few yeah. ideas? Uh, what we're going to focus on next, in, uh, in my opinion, is uh, the business of training. Uh, this is a, a sentence I made up. Uh, but this is looking a little on training. Where does it fit in upstream and downstream? So now we spend a lot of time focusing on skills, presentation skills, how to deliver content, how do people learn. So it's really important that we don't sub-optimize the training that we are interlinked with the sales, the marketing, these upstream and downstream functions. So this is some of the things we're going to focus on going forward. Another uh, very important area for us is the uh, online delivery. We have seen the virtual classrooms really give some benefit and some uh, uh, good uh, thoughts for us. And uh, we are striving a lot to make this an integrated part of our delivery into the, uh, into the world going forward. Um, another thing, and this is a, for a trainer, a very, very difficult area, or at least for me the years I've been a trainer, is this evaluate and measure your impact. Yeah, you can give out the happy sheets and uh, they will rate you a uh, bad, bad smiley, happy smiley, whatever. But you don't really know how to use all the feedback and really measure, you can say, also the business impact of the training. So these are one of the things that we would very much like to, uh, to focus much more on going forward. Um, and then another aspect is we from headquarters, or at least from, from my position, we have very often think, thought of training as a one-way thing. So kind of like here, having a PowerPoint, delivering it out, and then saying, thank you, come again next time. And, and we deliver materials that support this and not maybe supporting the trainers as more of a facilitator of knowledge and learning and making people learn from each other. So this is another area that we are wanting to focus on. They're all quite interlinked. And then uh, my biggest uh, thing is uh, being world class. And uh, one of the guys in the office said to me the other day, okay, when is this uh, world class thing over? We had a few sessions with Reed and uh, you must uh, move on to some, uh, some new stuff. And I'm kind of thinking, no, 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 no. Reed is a part of world class, but having world class a part, a, as a part of our DNA is what we want to use going forward to make sure that the program lives after the session should read has, uh, has uh, finished. So these are some of the main focus areas uh, mm. going forward. That's it. And, and to be world class, you need to be constantly keeping an eye on what the rest of the world is, is doing. And so 
at the start, we're internal and we're looking in at the skills and behaviors that we have within the business, making sure that they're consistent and making sure that we're moving people up and forward. As we move through the program, we start to take an external perspective, sharing best practice from across a number of different disciplines. And we can start moving from training as a presentation medium and a one-way street, as Mikkel describes it, into something that's a bit more collaborative and a bit more technologically focused and a bit more aligned to people's individual expectations about how they now access learning and, and new content. We're coming to the end of the things that, uh, that we have prepared to talk to you about, but there's a lot more that we'd like to, to engage you in in conversation. We're very happy to take any questions, but we're also on stand 57. You'll have seen on your, uh, on your chairs, there's a, a leaflet asking you to come and pick up your little book of inspiration, which is a fantastic read for anyone who's in the learning and development industry or needs to find ways to get people to be inspired or engaged in anything. Could be, could be learning, could be the performance or, or what they're doing at work. Uh, so come and have a chat with us afterwards or come and have a chat with us at the stand. We'd be delighted to, uh, to tell you any more. But thank you very much for your time.